The virtual memory palace. At a fundamental level, all memory palaces are virtual memory palaces. Why? You are creating an imaginary construct. We base this construct on buildings or areas we've seen in real life. We navigate it virtually in our imagination. This point comes up in a big way in a book called The Art of Memory by Francis Yates. It's in chapter 12 when Yates analyzes a debate between the idea that memory should be practiced purely on the basis of logic with no mental imagery involved whatsoever. As one of the defenders of using logic without mental imagery says, and here I'm paraphrasing, if you say your memory palaces are true, then you are lying. Well, magnetic friends, what is truth? And who amongst us can be so certain that the world appearing in front of you is what it seems? If you're interested in the philosophical and historical aspects of the memory palace, make sure to check out our community's playlist on the art of memory for more discussion like this. And I promise that if you read the art of memory along with us, you'll find plenty that improves your practice. Should you be interested in these matters? In a word, yes. You really are robbing yourself of the full power and glory that comes from a memory practice guided by the fullest possible understanding of the tradition. Back to practical matters in the here and now. When you're basing a memory palace on a location you've seen with your own eyes, you seriously reduce cognitive load. Go back to Coslin if you're interested in the scientific why and how. When you invent new memory palaces or base them on movies, well, I can't speak for everyone under the sun, but for a lot of us, that's just way more work than is necessary. And in part two of the Art of Memory series, I suggest that a man named Giordano Bruno, who many think was telling you to invent virtual memory palaces, was actually saying just the opposite. I, like Bruno, many hundreds of years ago, suggest you lower the load. And to do that, I suggest you follow along with me for a little mental experiment. When you last moved into a new home, did you have to work hard to memorize the layout? <laughs> Probably not. Spatial memory takes care of memorizing the layout on autopilot. That's what makes calling it to mind so easy. But if you're using a video game as a memory palace, not only do you have to learn the layout in a completely different way, you don't physically navigate it in quite the same way you would with your full sensory capacities. There's no smell of the kitchen, no love for that favorite food in the fridge, and certainly not its taste, at least not yet. Those signs are showing that neural implants might force it upon you soon enough. Don't go chasing after that level of corporate control at the deepest cellular level. Word to the wise, that's going to require a whole new definition for the word slavery. Again, I speak this with a note of caution. This cognitive overload that I experience when using video game memory palaces may not be true for all people. But I think for most of us, virtual memory palaces cost more time and energy than they are worth. That said, Idris Zogai shares some wisdom on the practices of invented memory palaces that you might find useful. That discussion is available only on the Magnetic Memory Method podcast.